Hello, everybody, and welcome to Open EXO Live. It's great to be with you. Uh, it's evening for me here, uh, but perhaps it's the morning or the afternoon or late night for you. So, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here with you. And today uh, we have Ryan Tubbs with us. Uh, and as you can see on the screen there, we have uh, some amazing folks uh, coming up in the in the next eight weeks. And so Ryan uh, is uh, joining us, I think from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and uh, he has just, uh, well, not just, but in the during the pandemic, started a new company. And so we're going to be speaking about that, about his journey uh, uh, into building an EXO. And so, Ryan, uh, really great to uh, have you with us. How are you doing uh, this afternoon on your side? I'm doing well. And you did get the location right. I am in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, and have been here um, for the past uh, 10 years almost now. Um, I was in Chicago before that. But yeah, enjoying the lovely summer weather here in North Carolina. I'm going to head down to the beach in a couple of days to celebrate the 4th of July, in fact. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, that sounds really great. Uh, I'm I'm in I'm in Cape Town, South Africa, and it's winter, and that means it's been raining the entire week. Um, so, uh, but anyway, uh, I hope you're enjoying the sun there. And yeah. we always start by asking uh, the folks who are joining us, you know, just to give us a bit of background on you. Tell us, uh, you know, where you where you, you know where you come from, what you've been doing, and really also what 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 brought you into uh, the Open EXO community. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I won't go all the way back, uh, but okay. suffice to say, um, I've been in technology for really my whole career um, as a software developer, then as an architect, um, then as a CIO. Um, and so that kind of kind of traditional path from developer to, you know, to kind of technology leadership, if you like. Um, now, what was interesting is I had the great privilege um, during my time at Microsoft, I was 13 years at Microsoft, to take on a role as a chief transformation officer. And this was um, a new role to the organization that was really designed to, um, to try to experiment with new innovative organizational models. Um, and new ways to invoke kind of cultural change or behavioral change that aligns to the company's culture. Obviously, during my 13 years, Microsoft went through massive transformation from you know the Office and Windows company to what it is now being one of the leading cloud companies. Um, and so that was a very massive undertaking to kind of bring all the 100,000 employees along um, for that ride. And so I became fascinated with uh, really the whole EXO movement. I was really studying anything that was related to, you know, new innovative organizational change design, um, you know, behavioral change, um, any methodologies that have been proven to help um, drive behavioral changes in enterprises and things like that. Yeah. Um, and it was really fascinating because it's, it's amazing to see from the inside out, from an internal corporation, um, how, how these the scaffolding like has built itself up over a very long period of time and how really, really difficult it is to break down. <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, I mean, of course we speak about, you know, immune system uh, with, with, within the, the community mm -hmm. and, and, and how existing organizations struggle to, you know, to innovate because of that. And, and it's, it's not a bad thing, right? Uh, it's only a bad thing when, when having that immune system is going to cause you to, you know, to collapse, you know, almost like an autoimmune disease, right? right. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, so you now, I mean, obviously, uh, before we get into, into speaking about the fact that, you, you know, you left Microsoft during a pandemic to start a, a new business, yeah. I'd like to understand, do you have a personal MTP? And is that perhaps aligned to why you, why you may have, uh, you know, started your own business? Yeah, it definitely is, and I I will tell you that my um, my personal MTP is is wrapped up in the the new ventures MTP, as you might expect. I mean, after you know leaving leaving a a, a career from the corporate world to do this, th this is kind of my swan song. You know, I mean, this is this is a very meaningful moment for me in my in my career. Um, so big, big, big leap, and it was really based on what I experienced when I was at Microsoft. Um, Obviously, great company, um, had a great career there, um, but I was starting to see, you know, people get physically sick 
um, with stress, um, just the stress of, of modern life. Um, and no amount of <laughs> technology that we could impose upon people was, was helping to solve that, you know, and, and that's when, again, I became a student of like behavioral change management and things like that. Um, and, um, my, my co-founder and I, we, we were both at Microsoft at the time. We did a whole bunch of research to try to figure out, you know, why were people dropping like flies? Why was, why was stress so high? This, this kind of chronic and rampant burnout that we were starting to see and, and what we can do to prevent it. And just mm -hmm. in summary, and maybe I'll get into some more of the details, you know, later on in conversation, but in summary, we found that you know, most people are just not properly armed with the skills to 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 be always on, to be you know live in an unstructured and ambiguous work life environment, to have work and life inter intertwined at all times, um, and and those are skills that that people don't teach. Um, the corporate learning doesn't teach it. Uh, you know, a higher level education doesn't teach it. Um, you know, even just learning platforms, e learning platforms, these are things that aren't taught. So. So our MTP, um, which again is the same as my personal MTP, is uh, really to arm a billion people with the necessary soft skills to excel in a digital era. Wow, that's yeah, that's that's really amazing because, uh, like you've said, I mean the the world is is I mean isn't changing. It it, it really sort of changed yeah. uh, in 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 terms of the way you know we function because of technology because. You know, we have the power of, you know, of a president in the 90s right here mm -hmm. in our in our hands. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, can you can you tell us a little bit about perhaps what what made you make the decision to to jump during a pandemic? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we'll get into into a little bit about what what you're really looking to do with a uh, billion minds. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and in fact, it. It, it wasn't my intention um, to to leave the organization in the middle of a pandemic. It just happened that that's when people needed what we were trying to do the most. Um, uh, you know, this this path to chronic stress and, and rampant burnout existed well before the pandemic. Um, that's yeah. been happening for the last you know twenty years, um, and that's mostly again aligned to the trajectory of of you know exponential technologies. Um, and so, uh, but when, when the pandemic hit, it just poured gasoline on the problem. Um, and so for me, the decision came was like, look, if I'm going to do this, now's the time to do it because now's the time where, you know, it used to be that people opted into this lifestyle, um, call it like a work from anywhere lifestyle or a digital nomad type. So it was a very small portion of people. Then it just ended up being every person, you know, on the planet was forced into this type of work modality. And 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 so many of them, almost all of them, were woefully underprepared for it. And so, for me, that was the decision during the pandemic. Obviously, it's very difficult economically to to you know start a business and you know raise capital and do things like that during a pandemic. But um, if if we can't if we can't help now, um, then we're missing a huge opportunity to influence uh, a lot of people because that's that now is when the need is the most palpable. Absolutely, and so. So perhaps you can you can you can share a little bit about exactly what what you're looking to you know to do and 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 how you're looking to to get there and and if we I mean ultimately after that I do want to you know get into some of the EXO attributes and looking at that uh, as well but but perhaps you can you sure. can look at weaving those in uh, weaving those in as we sure. as, as we as we chat here and and just a reminder to those who are watching. If anything here sparks your uh, a question, you can always ask that no matter what platform that you are watching this on. So, uh, Ryan, over to you. Yeah, I, you know, I think the there's first off the the punchline here is that there's no way that we could do what we're doing if we weren't built like an EXO. So I will circle back to that when we hit the the attributes. Um, because we are going big, we you know our our MTP is wrapped up in the naming convention of our company. Um, if we're if we're un unable to reach a billion people, then we failed. Um, we failed in our our mission. We failed in our our you know achieving our MTP, our aspirations. Um, and so, uh, just to give you a little bit of the the journey of how this thing was formed, it, it started with some um, some research that my co-founder and I did when we were um, just trying to figure out what was happening and what was the root cause of, of this, this other pandemic as we talk about this chronic stress and, and burnout phase that we're in. 
And what we found is that um, of the, we did initially, we did 300 interviews um, as the basis for our research. And we were able to classify the people that we talked to <clears throat> in, in basically two different broad categories. Uh, the first is people that uh, were struggling, <laughs> which was 99% of, of those people. Um, and then the 1% of people that were thriving. And so we directed our, our follow-on um, research into how are these people thriving? Yeah. And what we found is that there was basically three characteristics that they all had in common. Uh, and it was that they were organized and had some um, uh, – used technology to help them uh, and, and to, to be more organized um, is, a, is a big part of it. They subscribed to a, one or more methodologies, so in a, they had an approach – a, um, a repeatable way that they attack their day, if you like. Um, and uh, that may be that they subscribe to an existing methodology, like a uh, getting things done or a four hour work week or, or something like that. Um, or they've, they've rolled their own, right? They've figured something, they've figured themselves out. They've had their own kind of personal journey to figure out their own approach. And yeah. then I think what the, the major key is, the third one, is that they have a deep, relationship and, and priority associated to their own well-being and that's their physical well-being and their mental well-being like they get they understand that doesn't matter how how productive they are doesn't matter how organized or you know how refined their approach is if they're not well enough to execute none of that matters if you can't get yourself out of bed in the morning because you're you're overwhelmed then, then you, it doesn't matter if you've got all these systems and tools in place, right? Um, and so we built the, the company, all of our educational materials, and then indeed our software platform around the basis of finding the equilibrium of those three things. We call it the personal effectiveness equilibrium. And our objective is to help e individuals find and sustain their equilibrium. And when you get pulled out of it, we pull you back in, right? And so that's the basis of the organization. And then we deliver that value um, via digital platform. So it's software combined with uh, education, mentoring, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay. I mean, that's that's really great. And, and, and so, you know, obviously, in order, to, um, in order to reach a billion minds, you need to you need to pretty much cover at least three continents, right? Because because well, well, you could cover one in Asia, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. let, let's let, let's actually get this correct. But but if you know if if you're going to be starting with the English speaking world, which is uh, likely the case, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's 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 three continents at least, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. so so as you said earlier, there's no way that you can do that. Um, thinking linearly you, right. you there's no way you can do that you know trying to build a, an organization like you would have in the 90s right, right. It, it 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 it's just it's just not not going to not going to work and so how how are you looking at 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 implementing you know the the EXO attributes like is it is it is it something that that you when you when you started the conversations you actually have have like tracked down on a, on an EXO canvas and said okay this mm -hmm. is where are we going to tackle it, or like, how have you how have you gone about that? Yeah, we 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 did do that, uh, and so um, you know, shout out to the the Open EXO team for uh, for educating me because it was um, we formed the company um, around the time that I was going through my own training, my own Open EXO certification. Um, yeah. And so I used Billion Minds as the canvas, if you like, um, yeah, to, yeah. To, to learn the attributes. So that was definitely very timely. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the MTP has gone for a very interesting ride um, over the course of the last year, as you might expect. Uh, you know, yeah. startups make pivots all the while. Um, it's very common. But um, but I think our overall or underlying um, objectives haven't really changed, and and that's to have this you know kind of massive scale. Um, effect on on human population, and um, yeah. So I mean, I think that, you know having an MTP at all is is important. I mean, that's always kind of the capstone, if you like, um, because we're we're really trying to to build a community uh, of people that understand this problem that we're trying to solve and want to be part of the solution. Because in the end, and as one of our one of our users so eloquently put it, um, you can't solve a deeply human problem without humans. 
And, um, and that was one of the very interesting things that revealed to us like, huh, um, we were going to solve this with just software, but that's not very human. So how do we, how do we achieve this thing? Um, and so I, I think that one of the, the key attributes of our now business model that's really based on uh, leveraged assets um, is one of the key, um, key components or key attributes of an EXO. Um, because in order to scale the human side of it, you can't replace humans, right? Uh, you know, so how do you, how do you tap into the abundance of humans that exist in the world? And, and, and actually what we're doing is we're tapping into the abundance of people that, that have solved it, that do have their equilibrium state and mm -hmm. want to help other people get theirs. There's, it's amazing how many people really do desire to help other people. They just don't know how, yeah. right? Or they don't have the vehicle, they don't have the platform, or they don't have the time, right? Um, but fundamentally, there's a lot of people that like to help people. How can we tap into that? And so one of the ways that we're scaling the human dimension of our platform is by tapping into the abundance of life coaches. Um, and this is this, this massive self-improvement market that's getting even bigger. We yeah. can help those life coaches scale themselves so they can reach more people. And when I say life coaches, think about the subcategories too. It could be wellness coaches, you know, mental fitness coaches, things like that. Um, so kind of a broad, diverse category. But people that help other people be more effective in their daily lives would help them define their objectives and the outcomes to achieve those objectives. Um, we can we can deliver those the wisdom that's up in their brains, and it could be anywhere in the world to somebody on the other side of the world via our digital platform. And so they don't work for Billion Minds, right? So that's not part of the model. That's an asset that we're leveraging. We're tapping into that abundance. So that's a that's a key attribute. That's one of the key attributes. Absolutely. And so, you know, so so if if there were, you know, life coaches here watching, I mean like that that are saying this sounds like a a tool that 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 can, you know, can be part of the of my toolkit, right? That 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 I'm currently using. What uh, what should they do? Should they should they just head over to your to your <laughs> your, your website, which is scrolling down here, and, and actually uh, like sign up, or like how how yeah. could they how could they participate? Well, it's definitely a good first step. Um, I, I I'd mentioned to you you know before that we've undergone a number of of pivots. We had thought originally that yes. that software and software alone was going to be the the core of the solution. Um, and now we know that it's not. So this this pivot that we've made to a more um, uh, a broader kind of user experience, more programmatic experience that involves humans is fairly recent. So we're still building out um, how we're going to um, work with those coaches. We had eleven coaches that we're we're testing this with now. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly as a first step, uh, go to billionminds.com. Um, just it, go to sign up. There's just one sign up thing that you can do, and it's just an email address. And and what we're going to do is we this goes into our community nice not a terrible segue kevin into another attribute yeah. <laughs> um, is that we don't presuppose what um our billion minders mean to us there's people that have signed up to be part of this this mission um and and so we start the dialogue the place to start the dialogue is on the website let's just start a conversation we don't know if you're going to be a coach if you're going to be a user if you're going to be a beta tester if you're going to be a investor, if you're going to be an advisor, if you're going to be an affiliate partner, we don't need to presuppose that. What we're trying to do is build a community around this mission, and then we tap into that community for various reasons. Um, and you might be two of those five things I just mentioned. You might be one of them. You might be all of them, right? Um, and so that's why we've kept it fairly generic, like sign up to be part of this mission. And don't just sign up to be a user. Or don't just sign up to be a, a coach. We think that People are people in our community are going to fulfill multiple roles in this mission. Absolutely, and and uh, uh, Michael Freiber has has said on 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 LinkedIn that uh, it is a it's a great idea, really good concept, but uh, you know scaling is limited to twenty four hour days and linear human uh, resource though. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. Well, that's no, true, and and so there. That's why um, we've broken down the experience into. Um, it's a multimodal experience, let's say, and into different facets. And so 
uh, for example, we can use technology, specifically the software, uh, to help users go through particular activities, like a five whys exercise, if you like, to try to better refine the outcomes that you're trying to drive. Very insightful. You don't necessarily need a human to guide you through that. That's a, that's a place that technology can really be advantageous. Um, now, on the flip side of that, so that's a pure technology kind of side. On the other end of the spectrum where it's deeply human, that's like the accountability side, right? That's having a human that is challenging you, that's keeping you accountable, that's bringing up your board and saying, hey, there's a lot of activities going on here that are not aligned to the objectives that you said were important. And so it's a, it's a, it's a reinforcement, it's a reminder, it's an accountability side of it. You don't need that all day, every day. You might need that once a month. You might need that once a quarter. It's going to be very personal. Um, but if you had to have that all day, every day, well, that does change the economics of this, doesn't it? Because then, that, then it is that linear thing like you mentioned. But then there's all the stuff in between. How can we extract some wisdom from, from these coaches, from, from really anybody that has advice to provide um, in meaningful bite-sized bits of education? Uh, that's video content, that's written content. The most important thing is it's served up in your daily workflow. So you don't go, to, you don't have to go to medium to, you know, surf through millions of articles. You don't have to read every single productivity or personal effectiveness, self-improvement book, but rather you can consume a one minute long piece of content that actually gives you the guidance that you needed to achieve this milestone for this particular day. And so that's where it's really that confluence of technology and humans, right? It wasn't written by AI, it was written by a human, or it was a video that's an actual human. But you can serve those things up more regularly, and those are types of things that can scale. Absolutely. And now, one thing we were speaking about before, and you've sort of mentioned it here too, is, is the fact that, you know, you've, you you've experimented and you've and you've seen things and that's made changes so obviously you know leveraging that experimentation how how um and i i can't think of the word how deliberate are you in 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 thinking about experiments right um you know and and making sure you are you are experimenting and yeah. and then you know seeing the outcomes and then making decisions based on that well, I would say that my full-time job is is experimenting. <laughs> it's all an experiment, right? Uh, you know, and I don't think you were specifically tossing that one up for me, but it, you know, it, I truly do believe that. I mean, I um, I think that's where it's all going. I, I think that's where corporate R and D is going. Um, uh, you know, and I and, and so, you know, if you're not constantly testing your your assumptions and validating your assumptions, um, you're going to end up building something that nobody wants or needs. Um, and so. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a daily that's built into the, our DNA uh, as an organization is is inter. I mentioned before the community, the importance of building the community is uh, not just building your customer base or your advisor base or your partner base, um, but building a group of people that you can continuously interact with and yeah. continuously you know, keeps you honest and continuously re helps you refine your value proposition based on giving you that raw candid feedback. Um, and running a series of experiments and using those those people um, as those that can experiment for you on your behalf or with you. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the whole game is experimentation. We, we haven't stopped. We never will stop. That That's the that's the most important attribute, really, of any startup, in, in my opinion. Um, and it's something that we make a daily routine. No, absolutely. And 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 I can also see how how you've said that, you know, uh, this this really comes down to being like a human business mm -hmm. but that software product actually becomes that that interface that's right that that allows the augmentation of those humans that's um, right and 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 so you know so so definitely you know tapping into tapping into all those all those exo attributes one thing i i, I was just um interested to, to know about is where you are placing um, you know, the importance of sort of like, uh, call it personality tests or, mm. or, or understanding of oneself that, you know, there's, there's numerous different yeah. ones, whether it's, you know, Enneagram through to Strength Finder to, yeah. you know, to uh, many, many others that, that are out mm. there. Um, is there, is like, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, just from a, from a personal point of view, it'd be really interesting to, to know. Yeah, and the the short answer is um, there's a lot that we're going to continue to figure out about that. Uh, you know, one of the 
one of the challenges that we're trying to solve is that a lot of that great stuff, um, whether it's methodologies, whether it's um, wisdom that's you know manifest in just books alone, or it are things like um, these self actualization tests and stuff like that, they're not very well democratized yet, right? It's like you would if some people, maybe like one percent of people, have the wherewithal to go find these things and use them. Most people do not. And then some companies might prescribe them for their employees, and that's how they they get access to that. Yeah. But your everyday, you know, a person, everyday user that doesn't exist in those settings or doesn't have those characteristics doesn't have access to that wisdom. Why is that? And it's because it's not being served up to them in their kind of daily routine. Um, you know, there's no there's no system, there's no technology that they're using currently every day that knows enough about them to serve that up to them, right? Um, yeah. And so you would have to really be on your front foot. You'd have to be very proactive and say, all right, I'm going to go buy the top best-selling you know, self-help books. I'm going to read them all. I'm going to figure out how to implement it for myself, right? Most people can't do that. Most people don't have the time to do that. And so we think very much of, of part of our value proposition is, is democratizing some of those things. Now, what that means is we have uh, at another aspect of our research is we've reviewed all those things. We've looked at almost every methodology we could find that is uh, in, in terms of productivity, you know, things like that. Um, um, we've read all those books. Uh, we've basically extracted the things that we think a everyday daily user could benefit from. And we're materializing those and serving them up, you know, via the platform. Um, and so it is in a way just extracting some of the, the raw materials of the goodness out of a lot of those different methodologies, but making them more meaningful and practical. So the one thing that I certainly learned being a, a, a change management you know, practitioner is that just going out and reading something doesn't do anything. You know, that, that <laughs> doesn't change your behavior. Um, it's how you implement it. And so I think that's part of the, the challenge is that so much of this wisdom is manifest in short form content or long form content, but not manifest in like your daily workflow. And, and we believe that when we can serve these things up, whether they, they're served up without you even knowing, I'm not saying that you thou shalt learn Kanban, but you're actually using it. You know, I'm not saying that you need to, you know, use the five wise technique, but you're actually using it by using this software. So yeah. instead of teaching them uh, a new approach or a new methodology, um, or a new test, right, of self-actualization, um, bring it to them. You know, instead of them having to learn something, you learn something about them so that you can s you prescribe, if you like, the right technique that's going to be right for them in the moment. Absolutely. Well, uh, Ryan, I think we could talk for, for, for quite a while here. Um, and, you know, we, we try and keep these, we've really shot over the time, but you know what are you speaking about here i know that that th 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 there's a lot of community members pretty interested in this we actually have a group of community members working on on an initiative called exponential individual mm. um and uh you know meets actually once a week and and look at like what what does the individual look like in the future um and and also looking at some of the things you've looked at so there may be yeah. some synergies there i, I um, don't think so it sounds like it yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to see that's happening i'd love to be a part yeah. of it no, absolutely. And so really great chatting to you. Uh, looking forward to, uh, to, to seeing uh, how, this, uh, how this continues to go. What is, what is it that you'd like to uh, leave folks with uh, as we uh, say cheers today? Yeah, I would just say that if, if you're somebody who is struggling to get through your day and then end your day with a sense of satisfaction and be able to switch off at the end of the day, um, just know this, you're actually the normal one now. <laughs> uh, and if you want to be part of the solution, then, um, then, then hit us up, go sign up at billionminds.com. Send me an email at Ryan at billionminds.com. You know, it's going to take, uh, you know, all of us to try to resolve this massive problem that we've got of, of kind of constant stress, chronic stress, you know, rampant burnout. So, um, help us join the journey. Awesome, Ryan. Great chatting to you. And we'll uh, chat to you again soon. Thank you, Kevin. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. So that was Ryan Tubbs uh, from A Billion Minds. Uh, great chatting to him, hearing what, what he's doing, starting a startup during a pandemic. Uh, really, really amazing. So thanks, everybody, for joining us this week. We'll see you again next week.